All right, how's it going, everybody? Um, like always, for some reason, every time I try to do a recording, something usually goes wrong, right? And it turns into me doing talking for like 20 minutes, only to realize something went wrong with the video. So I'm going to try this one more time. And if it doesn't work, we ain't making no third quarter update. All right. So, this is uh, Millennials Lead the Way. I do quarterly updates um, for my Fundrise account. I think the last update I did was in July, so it's about that time, right? Uh, so, the four things I focus on are remaining debt free, you know, maintaining an emergency fund, roughly six months for me personally. <clears throat> Increasing my income, and last but not least, maintaining a high savings rate, right? So these are four things that I think are vital, um, especially when you're young and you're starting out. Now, obviously, other financial heroes on YouTube have you know, got their definition on how to become wealthy, but this is why I actually show you guys, right, the work, right? I don't do Excel sheets. I don't give you hypotheticals because I don't necessarily care about making money on YouTube. Right? I want to give people a fair shot in actually building true wealth and that made up wealth that you see on a lot of uh, YouTube videos. So with that being said, um, right now my account is sitting at you know 352000 uh, My returns to date is 68000 I'm at the premium account level, and uh, I'm with the Balance Investing Plus. Um, you know, I decided to maintain this because, you know, I like getting that mixture, right? I like getting that uh, mixture of dividends and appreciation. I think especially, you know, 10, 15 years from now when this says, like, you know, 20000 or 30000 um, I think it's going to be a good mix, right? So, but for 2022, we're looking at 5,500 in dividends and 12,000 in appreciation, putting us at 17,000 for the year. And then you guys can see how much I've made all time since joining these guys in 2017. It's 22,000 and then 46,000 for appreciation. Putting us at that 68. So before the decrease in appreciation this quarter, I want to say I was at like 75 or so. I'll show you guys more in the performance section so you guys can see. But overall, I'm still up for the year. Before we leave, we'll look at my goal to see where I am. But uh, you know, right now I'm sitting at 100 and or sorry, 262 at the projects. And uh, this quarter, man, the amount of money Fundrise has been throwing out, right? It, you know, this this again reinforces what I've been talking about, and you trying to compete with a lot of these firms. And I understand, you know, Fundrise, they had a podcast where they say they don't necessarily compete with people, but, I mean, let's be honest, man. Unless Fundrise is investing on Mars, they're kind of competing with you, right? So, I mean, they bought 163 homes, you know, and they got an additional 25 homes, you know, in, in just one community, right? So, me personally... I'd rather be on the train than to, you know, be in front of the train, if you guys know what I'm saying. But, you know, I guess keep listening to your favorite YouTuber and bury yourself in debt. And, you know, we'll see where that gets you. But we'll go to performance, right? So we'll, we'll see. This is what you guys were looking for. So, um, so far in the third quarter... Uh, lost about, you know, quite a few in the East Coast E-REIT. Um, Heartland E-REIT was doing pretty good. 
And then, oh man, RIP to the growth Eri. Um, if you guys just joined Funrise in the second quarter, uh, yeah, right? So you're probably on the struggle bus right now. But for a lot of the OGs that have been with them for a while, you shouldn't necessarily be in the negative, right? Especially in your if you're in the the plus plans because you know that's more they're in more types of investments. So I mean, it kind of kind of balanced balanced out, or at least mine did, right? Um, overall, I'm still over five percent though. But you know, you know us, right? We gotta look at the dollar amount because there's some of y'all that believe your percentages matter when you have chump change in the account. So we'll give you guys the dollar amounts. So for the East Coast, I lost about 193. Um, you know, Heartland gave me about 700. Uh, for the most part, man, a lot of this stuff bounced out, right? And I lost about 1,200, which if you think about it, it was actually more because I want to say this was sitting at around 2,500 before this decrease. So, and then I forgot what this was at. But the income one, though, I made about 800. So overall, man, I'm, I'm still I'm sitting at 800, right? So, you know, it is what it is, man. I mean, like I said, you know, I didn't go into the negative this quarter. So we'll see. Um, as far as for the fourth quarter, we're we like nine days in. Um, you know, we're sitting at $300 so far. So, and then putting us at 17000 You know, again, this is why, you know, this is, to me, what separates an asset from whatever your favorite YouTuber classifies as an asset. So, it's also another reason why I don't believe in debt. Because, you know, when my account decreases, I still make money. You know, when you're quote-unquote house or I guess what people call it asset right when that decreases the amount you owe does not decrease actually if you stop paying the amount will increase All right so the amount you owe will increase so you know it's pretty clear where the two sides lay at and it's not until we get into rough times like this where we start to truly understand who actually makes money and who is just out here playing games. Um, but if we're looking at the returns, there's a lot of mergers, man. A lot of merging going on this quarter. Uh, I want to say the new ones were these four right here. Um, doing something wazoo. <clears throat> Show you guys the dollar amounts. Again, I mean, no negatives. The only negative is the development E-REIT. And to be honest, I think this is the last one that's probably going to get absorbed by either the flagship fund or the Fundrise E-Fund. If I were a guessing man. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, let's go down here to my favorite chart, which let me see how do I expand this real quick. Oh, I already did. So, yeah, man, um... I don't think we're going to make 400000 this year. Um, next year, for sure. Um, you know, just based off of contributions, right? Um, I want to try to maintain thirty grand every year. Um, so with that being said, you know, I'm done putting money in. Now, I got more money to put in, right? And I may just throw this 15 grand into the innovation fund. Um, I was going to use start engine, but eh, if I could keep everything consolidated with Fundrise, I'd rather do that. So I'm, I'm still not 100% on the innovation fund. I'm still reading it. Um, but if I were to do it, I would use Fundrise. Only because it's easier. I can keep everything consolidated. Um, and obviously, Fundrise has 
you know, more information than what we uh, what they put out. So, looking at the yeah, so I still haven't taken any money from this account since I started with them in 2017, and to be honest, I don't plan to for who knows how long, man. I mean, we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, I think that's about it, man. So let's go to the portfolio. <clears throat> you know, the flagship uh, fund continues to be the highest holding in the portfolio. Uh, the income real estate fund is next in line. Actually, um, any contributions for me personally, right? Any contributions that go in are being allocated towards this fund. So, you know, if I were to put that 15 grand in, about 100% of it would go here, which, eh, it is what it is. You guys know me, man. I mean, I let Fundrise do the allocation. I don't really do it. Um, but my cost basis is now over 300000 man, which had me wondering, you know, this is $300,000, man, cash, right? It's not made up equity, right? It's not you borrowing money from a bank and pretending like you have 300000 This is actually $300,000, right? Like if I were to pull this money out, I would have this in the account. You know, I would probably have this. But definitely this. And uh, it just goes to show you, man, like what that to make money, man, you, you really, really, really need money. And, you know, that's why I tell you guys, man, I don't focus too much on percentages because anything under like two mil, the, it's nothing to be excited about, man. Like, I mean, yeah, does this excite me? Yeah, right? Every once in a while, I'm just like, damn, I got 300 grand as a 30-year-old. But still, though, man, it's just like, bro, in, in order to see real money, you need real money. And uh, right now, man, like, this is the best place I can park 300000 There's no investment right now I could make that can get me reasonable returns and protect my my principal amount. Now, there's some of y'all watching right now that claim you can get whatever return. First off, I highly doubt it. Your favorite YouTuber can't even make the re good returns, right? Even if you could, it wouldn't matter because you'd probably throw chump change in there. And you guys know how I feel about chump change, right? I don't say chump change to discourage you. I say chump change because whatever percentage of nothing is still nothing. Right? It's only when you start throwing in money, you know, 100000 plus or not even 100000 like 500000 plus, you start seeing, you know, this decimal starts going more to the right. So... I say all that to say, you know, <clears throat> I don't get too excited about this because, you know, I'm just focused on increasing my income and keeping that high savings rate, right? Um, there's not too many investments that pique my interest anymore. Fundrise is the top when it comes to, like, what it is they do. I see a lot of companies now mimicking what Fundrise is doing. So... You know, that, that kind of says something. But, um, yeah, man. We'll, we'll see where it goes, man. We'll see what happens. Um, something I have noticed as well is the amount of dividends, though. Um, I noticed that they increased the dividends for both of the income and the flagship. Um, and I was looking at it, and I think I'm making, like, what? I think, like, $21, $22 a day now, so... But this, I'll wrap this video up. But uh, we're looking at transactions. I think what last time I did an update was like in what July. Um, nothing too crazy, man. Um, there's been quite a few of y'all signing up with the link. 
Um, again, you guys get a hundred bucks too. But I've just been doing the automatic deposits, and then we got the merger that's been going on as well. So, I mean, but other than that, man, I mean, that's all that's been happening. Oh yeah, let's go into the goal real quick. So, um, like I said, man, the only thing that's been increasing is the amount of dividends they've been paying out. So, it's, probably, it's higher than this, but, you know, probably making like 600, 630 a month-ish, give or take. So, yeah. There's some of y'all out there that pay, that are paying. Right? Some of y'all are paying this in interest. So, again, man, we obviously have different definitions of what we call assets, but only time will tell, right? I mean, wherever you end up later on, it's going to tell. And then the calculator, which, again, I don't pay too much attention to the calculator. I only look 10 years out at a time because the amount that can change in a year, it doesn't make sense to look that far out, right? I mean, a lot can change in five years, let alone 10. So to look either even further out doesn't make sense, right? These numbers don't even necessarily matter, right? So I look 10 years out, and that's as far, and that, that's where I focus at, right? That, that's where I lay the majority of my, my focus, so... And the goal is try to get a million dollars, you know, by 38 if possible. I do think it's possible because, again, I continue to increase my income, but we'll, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, man, I think that's I think that's about it, man. I think that's all I got. Again, I made this video. I tried making this video like three times, so, yeah, <laughs> bro, I'm just trying to get this over with. But uh, if you guys got any questions, man, go ahead and throw them down in the comment section below. Um, stay motivated. Again, your sole purpose should be to get out of debt. Or, you know, you can remain a debt slave and fall behind with the majority of Americans. So, that's all I got, man. Millennials, lead the way.